Hey everybody, Coach Brandon here with another guard retention lesson. Over the last couple videos we've been talking about the notion of offensive and defensive cycles. <coughs> we talked about how as somebody encroaches upon my hip line, I become defensive. I want to frame, get back to guard, make four points of connection so I can get back into an offensive cycle. We talked about the importance of framing. Once my opponent does start to get to that intersection of sideline and hip line, we talked about how that is a time to be defensive and to start framing with either hand frames for longer distances, elbow frames for middle distances, and in emergency situations, back hand frames for very close distances. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's a lot to remember. There, I'm not the kind of person who can keep all, that, all those uh, different elements straight. Um, maybe you're newer to jujitsu and you just need one piece of advice. Like you need one little soundbite piece of advice, one little catchphrase to help you understand guard retention a little bit better. Maybe you're not ready to take on all that extra fluff, all the extra, I shouldn't call it fluff, it's pretty important, but all the extra details. My one piece of advice that can help to improve your guard retention literally overnight is this. Deny chest exposure to your opponent. At no point do you ever want to have an open chasm, an open space between your opponent's chest and your chest. What does this mean? Sammy, can you lay on your back for me? So, as I go around and I get past Sammy's legs, Sammy never wants to have a situation where there's literally nothing in between my chest and her chest. She always wants to keep something between her chest and my chest, so I can't get down chest to chest here. Okay, you can use a you can use I mean any arm, any leg. You can use feet, you can use knees, you can use hands, you can use elbows. But it's very important that you never have the chest completely open and exposed, so I can come down and get chest to chest. So let's look at this in practice now, Sam. I'm gonna lay down. So initially, we can deny chest exposure using just our legs, where I just keep my legs between her chest and my chest. For instance, open guard, just a standard open guard here, right here. My legs are in between her chest and my chest. Okay, that doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that. If she tries to get chest to chest on me, she'll never be able to do it. If Sam were to go into like a Toriando type action, I can bring my leg in between her chest and my chest. Go back. So right now, my legs are denying chest exposure. They're in between my chest and her chest. Very slowly, just move my legs out of the way, Sammy, and stop right here, perfect. So I've lost that uh, denial of chest exposure. My chest is now exposed to Sammy's chest. So this is gonna be a situation where I need to get ready to put in frames, and I wanna bring my legs, ideally my legs, eventually my legs, back in between my chest and Sammy's chest. In this scenario, I'll take my outside leg, up and over the head. So now when Sammy goes to get chest to chest with me, she can't do it. Now I can look at the set rips, recover my guard, and get back into an offensive cycle. Oftentimes, denying chest exposure is going to be done with hands, or I'm sorry, arms and legs together in what we call a V frame. When I connect my elbow and my knee, now, when, she try, when someone tries to get chest to chest, they won't be able to. They'll come right here on top of the elbow and on top of the knee. Notice the V shape, hence the name V frame. So once again, if Sammy goes into a Toriano pass, she gets by the legs. If I just connect my knee and my elbow together, just like so, let's rotate. Perfect. Now when Sammy goes down to get chest to chest, she won't be able to. I'll be able to bring my other leg back in between my chest and her chest recover guard, and once again, get my grips to go back into an offensive cycle. In extreme emergency situations, you can even deny chest exposure with a single arm. Okay, this is obviously not the ideal, but in an, in an emergency situation, you may have to use this. So, I'm here, Sammy begins to get an angle. I can put up one, one frame like this. As this should come up now, as Sammy goes to get chest to chest, she can't do it, chest to chest. 
my elbow frame holds her off long enough as I build the pipe to scoot back. And now I've got my legs in between me and Sandy again. Now once again, I'm gonna to look to make my four points of connection and go back into an offensive cycle. So this simple piece of advice, just denying chest exposure, if you can do that in any number of ways, if you just keep that piece of advice in your mind, it'll be much easier for you to retain your guard as long as you can make it happen. And it's not always gonna be the fashion in which I showed, okay? It could also be the same, come up. You could come up with other creative ways to deny chest exposure. And then ultimately get your legs back in between your chest and the passer's chest. So for instance, Sammy goes into a pass, I get my elbows frames in place. Now I wanna connect my knee and elbow together, but maybe I'm struggling to do that. Maybe Sammy gets, uh, bring your knee up, up uh, knee mount, knee into my hip, right knee, perfect. Now I can't get my legs back in. My knees, relax here for a second. My knees are facing in this direction, so I, I, I can't get my left leg in. Her knee mount's blocking out my right leg, okay? So I, in, this sense, in this instance, I, think I can't get my leg all the way over the top. I may even just have to bring a foot here if you have the mobility for it. Not everybody will have the flexibility for this, I understand, but if you do have the flexibility for this, even flipping your foot up and over just like this is enough. Now when Sammy goes to get chest to chest, my foot can push her off and I can recover. Okay, in situations where maybe she goes Torianda and she gets all the way over my, over my head and shoulders up, up over here. And now when I try to bring a foot in, I can't reach. I can just bring knees in, once again denying chest exposure. So now when she tries to drive and get chest to chest, she can't. Maybe I'm not even looking to get back to guard yet. I'm just focused on just denying chest exposure. And I'm waiting for an opportunity to get back to guard. Maybe if I try to get back to guard right away, I fight and I just let her drop into side control because I tried to do too much at once and wasn't careful with how I was using my frames. But as long as I get something in between my chest and her chest from right here, I'm just gonna hold this position. If I try to explode out of this, what happens is my chest opens back up. If I try to push and I lose contact, my chest gets exposed again. So a lot of times what I'll do, once I get something in between my chest and her chest, is I will just let my body hold its position. I won't explode, I won't push, I'll just keep everything contracted and tight, and I will wait and look for my opportunity to get back to guard. It doesn't have to happen right away. As long as I can keep, um, de keep denying chest exposure, I don't have to recover guard right away. I can sit here for as long as I need to. So if Sammy comes in and I deny chest exposure, she's trying to pass, I can just hold this position until eventually I feel an opportunity to bring a foot back in. It doesn't have to happen right away. Again, if you try to push right away, what'll happen is once you have knees and elbows connected, if I try to push with my legs and my hands right here, I push, eventually my knees and my elbows will start to drift apart, and that's not a good thing. We always wanna to try to keep our knees and our elbows together as much as possible, okay? So one more time, just a quick recap, say, on your feet. Just one simple piece of advice, deny chest exposure to your opponent, always keep your legs or arms or something in between your chest and her chest. This could be legs on their own. So she passes the legs and I bring a leg over, just legs, that's fine. Maybe she gets a little deeper in the pass and I have to connect my knee and my elbow together and I need to hold off this frame long enough to start to bring my legs back to the inside position and go on the attack. Or in extreme circumstances, it could even be an arm by itself. She goes, I frame, I come up, I scoot, and once again, I go into my four points of connection into an offensive cycle. All right, guys, so I hope this piece of information helps you. Again, if you can't keep track of different demarcation lines and offensive and defensive cycles, if you can't keep track of framing, just think about that one piece of advice. Deny chest exposure to your opponent. Never let there be an open avenue between their chest and your chest. If you can do that, it will be pretty darn difficult to pass your guard.